Because there will be no launch or landing sites on Mars, Starship will have to deal with debris on its own. Even though the existing launch pads are quite simple in design, Starship's launch pad will always be considerably different from the typical launch pads that we've seen in the past. Because Starship is designed to refuel in orbit, all fuel lines must be located at the bottom of the rocket, so it should be able to dock tail to tail in the orbit and transfer propellants. The fuel lines on most rockets are located on the rocket side. This allows the rocket to have a simpler plumbing design but it involves a considerably larger structure on the rocket side to provide the vehicle with fuel and electricity. This structure, also known as the strong back, immediately breaks away from the rocket as soon as it departs the launch pad during a Falcon 9 launch. This permits the strong back and all of its components to move out of the way of the rocket's flame, reducing the need for serious launch pad maintenance. This is just another issue that SpaceX is trying to address. In today's episode, We'll discuss the various headaches that SpaceX has been facing as soon as the Starship blasted while mounted on it. We will also look at the new plans that SpaceX has put in place to build another incredibly strong and reliable launch pad at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to back up with the ones at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Kindly stick around as we shove through this. SpaceX is not only trying to make the Starship entirely reusable, but they are also striving to construct a fully reusable launch pad. They want the launch pad to be so reusable that a Starship can land and return to it in less than an hour. To do this, the launch pad must be extremely resistant to debris and the force of the Starship's engines. However, the boom created during the launch can be exceedingly harmful to both the rocket and the launch site. When a rocket's engines fires up, the hot gases accelerate beyond the speed of sound and collide with the surrounding air. This generates shock waves that shoot tremendous amounts of energy into the launch pad and reflect it back onto the rocket. Building a rocket launch pad is more insane and difficult than you might think. Yet, while SpaceX continues surpassing its competitors and rivals, creating a new launch complex from scratch is incredibly difficult. On November 9, 2020, SpaceX conducted a static burn with one of the Starship prototypes. This was the first time that a fully built Starship generated thrust. The test was carried out with a single engine to ensure that the header tanks could deliver gasoline to the engine during a landing. However, the test did not go as planned. Concrete chunks flew upwards from the launch pad's base shortly after the engine fired up, although it appeared spectacular and proved far more harmful than it looked. The concrete pad beneath the rocket was coated with martite, an ablative coating designed to protect the concrete during each test firing. The martite had done its work up to this point, however it eventually wore away after months of testing. The exposed concrete was pulled up and flung into the air. A piece of concrete flew into the engine bay, severing an electrical line and injuring one of the engines. Despite the bizarre sight of flying concrete, SpaceX got it fixed and returned the next day and decided to conduct another static fire using two Raptor engines. During the test, the engines released concrete into the air once more, but when the engines were turned off, a considerably larger problem was discovered. A luminous liquid was spotted from the vehicle's bottom onto the launch pad. The interior components of the Raptor engine had entirely melted, and the burning liquid was actually molten metal. This damage was possible since there was no flame diverter underneath the rocket. Instead, the engine's force was striking the concrete at a 90-degree angle, creating a massive heat and energy pressure point. But with the years of experience, SpaceX should have seen this coming. The sound energy Energy released by the engines was intense enough to damage parts of the solid rocket boosters protective thermal panels. Most launch sites use sound suppression devices to absorb most of the energy. The most popular method involves spraying a huge volume of water beneath the rocket. When sound waves collide with water, they are absorbed by air bubbles which contract and heat up, converting sound energy into heat energy. SpaceX is moving forward with the plans to upgrade and expand a launch pad at Cape Canaveral Orbit Force Station, which will act as a backup to the Kennedy Space Center pad that the firm presently uses to launch cargo and personnel to space. During a press conference, Bill Gerstenmaier, SpaceX's Vice President for Construction and Flight Reliability, stated that the company is planning upgrades to Space Launch Complex 40 SLT-40, in preparation of the next cargo and crew launches, according to Space News. NASA has awarded SpaceX a commercial crew contract to shuttle crew and cargo to the International Space Station, using its Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft. We've already started the work on Pad 40 preparations. We've ordered some gear and some signed some contracts, Gersten Meyer said. Initially, SLT-40 will only launch cargo missions, but the company wants to add personnel missions later. It allows us to shift some things off 39A, which helps us balance launches of both pads, Gersten Meyer explained. 
The United States Air Force has leased SLC-40 to SpaceX since 2007. The Air Force used the Cape Canaveral launch pad to launch Titan III and IV rockets from 1965 until 2005. SpaceX leases NASA's Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A and uses it to launch crew and cargo flights to the International Space Station. SpaceX is also preparing to launch its Super Heavy Lift Starship rocket from its launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas, with CEO Elon Musk predicting that it might fly as soon as November. The company intends to launch the mega rocket from Kennedy Space Center in the future. As part of the Artemis 3 program, NASA chose Starship to land humans on the moon by late 2025. To that aim, SpaceX is constructing a gigantic Starship launch tower a few hundred feet from the launch tower on pad 39A. The gigantic 1,000-foot-tall launch tower is almost finished, with the 6th and 7th sections installed this summer. However, the presence of Starship near pad 39A appears to be causing NASA some concern, particularly in light of SpaceX's continued commercial crew duties. You know, SpaceX has a history of its prototype rockets bursting on the launch pad. For example, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket burst on its Cape Canaveral launch site in 2016, causing extensive damage that took more than a year to fix. Other escapades on the launch pad include an 8-second static fire test of a Starship prototype, which resulted in a brush fire. NASA officials notified SpaceX in June that a Starship explosion near LC-39A could disable the space agency's only way of transporting astronauts to the ISS, hence the need for a backup launch pad. As a result, SpaceX will modify the Cape Canaveral launch pad, but Kirsten Meyer says that the company will not send Starship to Kennedy until it is ready for prime time. The Starship is currently being tested in Boca Chica in preparation for the Mega Rocket's first orbital test. We plan to transport Starship to 39A once we have a dependable vehicle. In Boca Chica, we'll conduct a series of of tests to ensure the vehicle is ready for liftoff. We'll bring it to 39A when we think that we have a good and reliable vehicle, Kirsten Meyer said at the briefing. Starship is a fully reusable, super heavy lift launch vehicle designed to transport supplies and passengers to Earth orbit, the Moon, and maybe Mars. That's okay, but NASA is probably right to be concerned about having this rocket on their property. The Starship rocket is more ambitious than any other rocket in the tales of spaceflight history in every aspect. Not only does it have one of the most cutting-edge rocket engines ever developed, but it also has the additional potential required to be the first rocket that is totally reusable. Elon Musk claims that figuring out how to make the rocket has been an even greater problem than developing and building the Starship, which has been very challenging. Despite all of these obstacles, SpaceX appears to be making progress at an unbelievable pace. However, one of the most difficult parts or challenges that SpaceX will need to overcome is not the rocket they will be developing but rather the launch pad. Do you think the launch pad won't be a nightmare for SpaceX just like the heat shield tiles? And talking about nightmares, Blue Origin's engine is having a huge problem with capsule blast away from booster during launch. Click on this video to know more.